It's good to have a great elder that can fill in for you when you go on vacation. Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> well, I'm not a preacher. <laughs> I'm not a singer either. <laughs> I do love the Lord. <laughs> and our God is a wonderful, wonderful, great God. And this morning, I picked a title, Go and Tell. Why on earth would you not go and tell other people about our wonderful and great God? When I was a very young man, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was about 26 years old. But I was a 26-year-old man that could not read and, according to my wife, could not write either. We tried to write notes and she couldn't read them. <laughs> they decided when I was in second grade that I was not worth educating. They decided that they wanted to put me into an institution. My mother said she wanted to keep me at home. And she did, she kept me at home. And the school said, we will put you through the grades. We have to keep you in school till you're 16 years old. But there's no way we can educate you. Well, when I was 16 years old, because I'm a little younger than some of the rest of the kids in my class, I was a junior in high school. So I thought, well, one more year, there's gotta be a way to fake your way through one more year of high school. <laughs> so I did. And I actually got a diploma. But they told me when I got the diploma, well, it's worthless, you can't read. And I thought, well, probably that's true. <laughs> but I had a diploma. Our God is a wonderful and amazing God. He took this man that could not read or basically write. And I ask him, when I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, if he could use me for his kingdom. He is so so amazing. He took this man and he showed me that I do not see what other people see. There are things that literally do not appear for me that other people see. As an example, Linda and I were driving to the Biltmore one day and driving down the road, Linda said, oh, aren't those orange bushes just absolutely gorgeous? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and she turned to me and she said, you don't see those bushes, do you? I said, well, I see some bushes, but they just look like bushes. She said, pull off the road here. There's a place to pull off. And she said, drive right up to that bush. And so I drove right up to the bush, and she said, what on earth do you see when you look at that bush? I said, oh, I see a nice green bush. And she looked at me and she said, oh my gosh, she said, that bush is so covered with orange flowers that I can hardly see that there's any green on it at all. Well, I thought, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> but that's how God started to show me that I do not see. I love to tell these stories of what God has done over the years for me. 
The first scripture that I picked this morning is the Great Commission. Jesus was, had instructed the disciples to meet him at a mountain, a certain place, and he said to them there, but the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some were doubtful, and Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Why wouldn't we tell the stories of what Jesus has done for us? Is a story from Luke. The story of the casting out of the demons of a demon-possessed man, and Jesus cast the demons into the pigs, and the pigs went off the cliff into the sea and were drowned. And the man that had been healed of the demons, that had had them cast out, wanted to follow Jesus. And in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, Oop, I, I got the wrong one. It's Luke 8. Luke 8, verses 38 and 39. I was going to say, if that didn't come out right. <laughs> <laughs> the man said, But the man from whom the demons had gone out was begging him, that he might accompany him. But he sent him away, saying, Return to your house and describe what great things God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. We also read another story from John chapter 4. This is a story of the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well that Jesus met and told her all about what she had done. She, when he was, had, was when he had told her all of those things, dropped her water pot, and she ran into the city to tell everyone what he had done. Verses 28 and 30 tell us, I'm on the wrong page again. <laughs> I, I skipped over. It didn't make sense again. <laughs> the verses tell us, So the woman left her water pot and went to the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who has told all the things that I have done. This is not the Christ, is it? They went out of the city and were coming to see him. These people went out and they told what they had seen and what they had heard of Jesus Christ. What he had done for them. 
Why would we not go out and tell? Yes, when we go out and tell, there will be resistance. The people who have been in my Sunday school classes have heard me tell the stories of resistance. I have worked in a factory and been accused of preaching to people on the line and called on the carpet for having done that. I have worked in that same factory and been called the God man. When I first was called the God man, I was offended. And I thought, oh, I wish they wouldn't call me that. And I went home and I prayed and I talked with God and I said, I don't like what they're doing. And he said to me, well, wait a minute. Who do you think the God man is anyway? And I thought about it and I said, oh, well, the God man is Jesus. Well, who do you think they're seeing? And who are they making fun of? And he said, they are seeing Jesus Christ through you. That's who they're seeing and that's who they're making fun of. Not you. They're making fun of Jesus. And I counted it an honor an honor to be made fun of for the sake of Jesus Christ. Yes, when we go out and tell, when we tell people, we are going to be made fun of. There are going to be things that will happen to us that we cannot explain. But in this earth, there is an evil force that will fight against you. I have driven a car to go to a lay witness mission, a mission where I give my testimony. And on the way there, I drove over some kind of a blade that destroyed the tire on my car. And I was tempted to turn around. I opened the trunk up and I was going to put my spare tire on and I bounced the spare tire on the floor, on the ground, and it went plop. <laughs> there was no air in the spare tire. And I said, okay, God, do you want me to go back? That's what you want me to do, turn around. He said, no, look up, look, look, look. So I started to look around. Down the road about a quarter of a mile was a gas station. I rolled the tire down the road to the gas station. I pumped the tire up, and it stayed pumped up. So I rolled it back to the car, put it on the car, and I thought, hmm, well, should I turn around and go back home, or should I continue on to the mission? Okay, I'll, do, I'll drive through this city that I'm in now, and if I come out the other side and I've still got four tires up, I'll continue on to the mission. <laughs> so I did. And I got through the other side and all four tires were up. So I went to the mission. I got to the mission and I found out that I was going to stay at a house with another young man. And we were staying in Mr. Goodrich's house of all. <laughs> and Mr. Goodrich was a very elderly man, probably about my age. <laughs> And I was happy that there was another young fellow going to be staying in the same house. Well, we went home with Mr. Goodrich, and we had a nice talk with him. When I was getting tired, we said, well, it would be time for us to go to bed. We have to get up early for the mission in the morning. And oh, he said, okay, I'll show you to your room. Well, the two of us young fellows followed him, and he opened the door to the room and here's your room. There was one double bed in the room. A man I had met about an hour before, <laughs> and we were expected to sleep in the same bed. You talk about resistance. <laughs>
Needless to say, neither one of us slept that night. <laughs> the mission was wonderful. But the following night, the two of us started to talk to each other as we went in that room together. And I found out that he had a mother that was very similar to mine, a very domineering mother. And the two of us could share about our mothers and share how the trials were that we had. God has a way of leading us to places and times and things that are for our benefit, no matter what we think. But there is resistance. And if we turn around and go back home, we will never know what God has for us. In Romans chapter 8, we read some of my favorite scripture in all of God's word. What then shall we say of these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies, who is the one who condemns. Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all this, these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present or things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is nothing that can separate us from Jesus Christ our Lord. When I accepted Jesus Christ, I wanted to read his word. I wanted the worst way to be able to know what was in this book. He sat me down one day at a conference, I was at a Holy Spirit conference, and sat me down with a special education teacher that had a gift for teaching people who could not read. And she talked with me every single break we had. And she said to me, as we left that conference, if you do those simple things, you will learn to read God's word. And I did. Some mornings I had to get up at 4.30 in the morning to read. But I learned to read God's word. And it is a precious gift to read God's Word and to tell people how wonderful and spectacular 
our God is. So I would ask you today, as you go from this place, to share with everyone you see how wonderful and spectacular our God is. Amen.